Alessandre Pantoza is going to be fighting Steve Urseg at UFC 301, and as of right now, he is the main event. How did we get here? I, I've seen other YouTubers talk about this, uh, like like the MMA guru talking about Mohamed Nokayev's his terrible performance, him being boring, triggered this fight to happen. And make no mistake, that is a pretty big factor. But th that's just scratching the surface of the amount of things that had to go wrong in the UFC, in the fights that they made. If you wanted an example of the UFC not being scripted, okay? I know that's a weird, dumb movement that's going on on X right now. If you come across one of these people and they say the UFC is scripted, so them the amount of things that have had to go wrong. Show them this video. And I'm going to lay out every little thing that had to happen in order for this fight to be made because it's way more complicated than Mohamed Mokayev had a bad performance against Alex Perez and that's why the fight didn't get made. No, 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 no. Let me tell you the, the, the first thing that happened that kind of made this fight into in the being. Strickland lost to Drickus. I'm not kidding. That, that, that was the first step. Strickland, when he became champion, we knew he was going to be extremely active. In fact, he was too active for the UFC. They weren't used to that. Strickland was talking about he wanted to fight this. He wanted to make a turnaround for UFC 300. He would do anything for a paycheck. And I think even now people were used to that from Strickland. And, and you have people talking about how he's not being active enough now, even though he already, or, already fought in January. But then Drickus beat Strickland. Drickus is the new champions of the world. And the fight to make... I know he's been holding on polls on his... On X and all that. And I might make a different video of who's really next for the title. Who deserves it. But Drickus Duplessis wants to fight Israel Adesanya. That was the fight that to make. Israel confirms that. Drickus confirms that. But he's played with the rematch with Strickland. That's an option. So Drickus Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya. UFC 300. That's Even Shale said that was one of the things that was in the running. Israel Adesanya to be the headliner of UFC 300. He's not the champion. But he can fight a champion. I said he's either going to be fighting Alex Pereira because it's UFC 300 or they're going to do Israel Adesanya versus Drickus Duplessis. For anybody saying Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira at 205 doesn't make any sense. You can't, you can't justify that. They offered Leon Edwards Hamzat Shemaev. Trust me, we, we can get that crazy if we want to get that crazy. It's money. So Israel Adesanya, Drickus Duplessis, UFC 300, right? No. Drickus Duplessis wants to bring the UFC to UFC Africa. That's the event that he wants to do. That That's step two. That's the second thing that went wrong here. Okay? So what happens? Does, does the UFC like get the deal done? Is Drakus Duplicy fighting on UFC 300 against Israel Adesanya? Are they going to be doing it at UFC Africa? No. It's actually rumored to be taking place at Perth, Australia. So Drakus not doing UFC 300... It's kind of all for nothing because I understood him fighting on at UFC Africa. He wants to bring to the to the continent of his birth. I understand that. I respect that. However, that was supposed to be the main event of UFC 300, and I, I am willing to put a lot on it that Israel Adesanya versus Drikus was the main event that they were going with because the third thing went wrong. Alex Pereira's fighting on UFC 300, even though UFC 301 was already on the books. It wasn't outright confirmed, but it was pretty much like, yeah, he wants to fight around this time. So it's either UFC 300 or UFC 301. Which one? It was 301 against Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill, his team already confirmed that he wasn't going to be ready into an international fight week. You can pull up those tweets still. They are still up. His management said that Jamal Hill isn't going to be ready until International Fight Week, and that's the return that they're targeting. Jamal Hill is promised a title shot because he vacated the belt. Yuri Prohaska got the same exact treatment, vacated the belt after hurting his shoulder. That's how Jamal Hill was able to become champion. Jamal Hill ruptured his Achilles. That's how he was able to become champion after vacating it. So, he's going to be able to fight Alex Pereira. June, right? Maybe we can push that up a month. Maybe we can do that at 301. That was the plan. Alex Pereira was supposed to fight at UFC 301 against either Jamal Hill or Magomed Ankalaev. But then, Israel 
Can't fight Drickus for 300. They're scrambling to find a main event. They don't want to do Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad, the only other champion that I guess you could put on that card. Facing the fans, chanting, let's oil up Dana White all throughout Twitter, making that a trending hashtag, by the way. They, they, they force Alex Pereira against Jamal Hill for UFC 300. And now Alex Pereira is talking about making the quickest turnaround out of any champion ever. Knocking out Jamal Hill and making a turnaround for 301. But then the third thing went wrong. No, no. The fourth thing went wrong. 301 is at Brazil. The only Brazilian champion that is open right now is Pantoja. Okay? Who are we going to put Pantoja again? He beat Moreno a couple times. He beat Roy Val. He wants to stay active. He is the only Brazilian champion that we could put up right now. Charles is fighting. These all count as like many things that they got wrong. Charles is on UFC 300. Alex Pereira is on UFC 300. Divison Figueredo is on UFC 300. All these Brazilian fighters that you could be putting on this card because you want to stack UFC 300 because you kind of fucked up with making 299 stacked. Now 300 has to compete. Or we're going to oil you up, Dana. So uh, all those things are going wrong. The UFC is freaking out. So what, what do we do? What do we do? Okay. Let's make Amir Albazi versus Brennan Moreno for UFC Fight Night Mexico. Okay. Moreno can beat Amir Albazi. And then, because Brennan Moreno is the most marketable dude in the flyweight division, we can market Brennan Moreno against Pantoja, UFC Rio. Let's do it. Pantoja's beaten uh, Moreno many times. It's able to get a win for the Brazilian fans. Okay, that's what we can do. Amir Albazi's just pulled out. Okay, who are we going to get? Who, who wants to make the turnaround? Brandon Roy Val, the dog, wants to come in, sort notice, a fight that he was never supposed to be a part of against Brennan Moreno. Okay, well, Moreno already has a win over Roy Val. Roy Val's coming off a loss to Pantoja. Wasn't a great performance. People thought it was kind of boring. Um, well, at least Moreno can put on a fight of the night performance. And Moreno can fight Pantoja. Because, you know, Moreno's been training at Elevation, right? No, he hasn't? Okay. Uh, well, he'll beat Roy Val, right? No. Roy Val wins the fight. A five-round fight against Brennan Moreno, somebody who has way more experience than he does. Shit. Yeah, no, 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 no. That, that, that's... I guarantee that was the talk that was happening. Because now the UFC is in a situation where they have to make a fight for Pantoja. Pantoja wants to stay active. Let's do Brennan Roy Val against Pantoja. Hunter probably would have seen the numbers and been like, ooh, that's not going to sell well. Okay, who, who else do we got? Mohamed Mukayev? Okay, uh, he's one of the youngest flyweights in the division. Uh, he'll be the second youngest UFC champion ever if he can beat... If he can win at UFC 300? Okay, let's do him. Who can we put him up against? Alex Perez? Oh, yeah, no, he, he'll ragdoll Alex Perez. Let's put him on a fight night, put it at the apex so people aren't booing him and people don't realize that a lot of these Dagestani fighters aren't actually stars. And let's keep up the ruse. Mohamed Mokayev has a boring performance against Alex Perez, getting a decision. Pro actually, probably one of the worst performances you can have as a title contender. Because when people are already calling you boring, you were outstruck by Charles Johnson. I'm going to keep bringing that up. You can rule that for Charles Johnson. It's not a robbery. It's a close fight. And then you nearly have your leg broken in a submission against Tim Elliott. And now you're fighting Alex Perez, and you couldn't take out Alex Perez, and you struggled getting takedowns in the third round because he was making you make mistakes, and that was fucking with you. At the apex, there's no crowd. There's no crowd. There's no crowd nerves. Like, it is drastically decreased. Okay? There's no booing. Like, being broken out of grappling happens at such a lesser frequency in the apex because there's no booing. And you weren't able to get a submission. Okay. Hey, Dana, um, who, who is Mokayev going to fight next? Shit, okay. We're going to give him Roy Val. We're going to give him Roy Val. But who are we going to give Pantoja? He's the only Brazilian champion that could fight at UFC 300, making him the headliner. Who do we have? Who, who's the only kind of marketable guy in that division? Manel Cap. Manel Cap's going into a fight night the week after UFC 300. Shit, okay. What are we going to do? 
Is there anybody else that's likable at that division? We got a guy that kind of looks like Aaron Rodgers. What's his name? Steve Urseg. What's his rank? Number 10. Shit. But it's okay. Nobody really cares because it's flyweight, the weakest division in the entirety of the UFC. Let's give Alessandre Pantoja, Steve Urseg, UFC 301, book it. Anyone else that we're going to put on the card? We could put myself ahead, huh? Um, we, we can make Paul Craig fight uh, Kyle Barillo. Is that really all we have? Well, if Alex Pereira is able to knock out Jamal Hill, we can have him make that turnaround and he can be the main event. So let me get this straight. One of your saving graces of the 301 card, the Rio card. And understand, I'm very lukewarm on this because the Rio crew, the, the Rio audience booed Glover Teixeira for it in his retirement, okay? I, I actually feel like you guys could, should get the worst cards. But Alex Pereira, who is supposed to be the headliner of 301, now has to KO Jamal Hill so he can make the turn around the fight Magomed on Kalayev. That is not happening unless Alex Pereira is the main character in this thing we call life. And that is how Alessandre Pantoja is fighting Steve Urseg at UFC 301. That is every little thing that had to go wrong, starting from Strickland losing the title to Drickus not fighting on UFC 300, thinking UFC Africa is going to happen, but nope, that's not happening. You're fighting in Perth, buddy, and you get to miss out on UFC 300. To the UFC, moving Pereira to the main event of UFC 300, moving him out of 301. To Roy Val, Moreno, Amir Albazi, and Mohamed Mokayev effing up. That is how we got here. And that's how 301 got fucked up. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. I'm not super mad about it. At the end of the day, it's flyweight. Steve Urseg is one of the only marketable people in that division. I know a lot of people said who, and I don't blame you. If you're ranked outside of the top 10 or the top 10 guy in flyweight, people aren't probably going to know who you are, unless you're named McNeil Cap. But yep, that is how 301 got effed up. Go in the comment section, tell me what you think about it, and I'll see you all next time.